The big nominating conventions go into political history. First, the Democrats named the Kennedy Johnson ticket. And now in Chicago, the Republicans who elected Abraham Lincoln as their first president just 100 years ago, pin their 1960 hopes on Nixon and Lodge. President Eisenhower, who will be giving up the world's biggest job, poses with his vice president in Chicago. The Illinois metropolis had given the chief executive one of the most heartwarming receptions of his career upon his arrival to address the GOP convention. Thank you, Ike Day is the theme for the thunderous welcome. And the enthusiasm spills over into the huge convention hall where Ike and Mamie hold center stage while convention business waits in the wings. partisan crowd receives an accounting of the Republican administration's two-term stewardship. But the headline-making remarks of the president concern the issue of whether people everywhere want to live under communism or a free system. He hurls a dramatic plebiscite challenge at the Soviet premier, Nikita Khrushchev. Concerning this matter of comparative national prestige, I challenge him to this test. Will he agree to the holding of free elections under the sponsorship of the United Nations? to permit people everywhere, in every nation, on every continent, to vote on one single simple issue. And that issue is, do you want to live under a communist regime or under a free system such as found in the United States? A long roar of approval follows Ike's challenge to Khrushchev. Then the convention gets down to the task of nominating its standard bearer. There is little suspense. Save for 10 votes cast for Arizona Senator Goldwater, it's all Nixon. The roll call vote is 1,321 for the vice president. A move to make the nomination of Nixon unanimous comes from the Arizona delegation. And this is done by acclamation as announced by the permanent chairman, Congressman Halleck of Indiana. The chair declares, therefore, that Vice President Richard M. Nixon has been unanimously nominated to be the candidate of the Republican Party for the office of President of the United States. The party spells out unity for its candidate, Richard Milhouse Nixon, the 47-year-old Californian, Vice President for the past seven and a half years. Later, Richard Nixon chooses as his vice presidential running mate, America's United Nations envoy, Henry Cabot Lodge. Nominated also by acclamation, the 58-year-old Mr. Lodge is shown with his wife, Chicago-bound, to accept the party's mandate. Ambassador Lodge is asked by a newsman... Well, how do you feel about the chances of a Nixon-Lodge ticket? Oh, I'm very optimistic. I, 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 think, uh, I think it'll be a, a fighting campaign. I think it'll be... It'll be exciting, interesting campaign, but I'm optimistic of the outcome because I think people are taking the, the situation of the United States and the world today very seriously. Uh, and they're right, and, and they ought to. I think they're, they're worried about the world. And uh, it's, like, it's like a man who's going to, uh, knows he's, he's going maybe gonna have an operation, he wants to have the best doctor. And I think the uh, voters, uh, will want to have the, uh, in, the, in the White House uh, the, the man who's the most experienced, who's the most intelligent, who's the most trained, uh, who's a real pro, in other words. And, and I think that is going to uh, convince a great many people to vote for Richard Nixon. And in Chicago, a post-nomination appearance with Pat Nixon, his two daughters, and his mother is made by the GOP presidential candidate. Mr. Nixon speaks thus of President Eisenhower. When I think of, of the burdens that he has carried, the responsibility that has been his, 
when I think also of the of the splendid record that he has made in every way, and particularly the dignity and the decency and the immense goodwill and feeling and affection for people that he has brought to the office of the presidency. I realize that for any man, be it Mr. Kennedy or myself, to follow in his footsteps will be a tremendous responsibility and a challenge which it will be very difficult for us to meet.